Good morning. Today's makeup tutorial, get the most out of your eyelashes. Uh, just kidding. That's not really what I talk about here. Um, but I thought if I said we're doing a makeup tutorial, we get a larger audience and then be thousands. It seems to be pretty popular on the internet. And sorry, just joking. Uh, the reality is, is I don't really talk about things like makeup tutorials that draw mass audiences. Uh, I talk about things that we need to hear, but probably don't want to. Uh, I'm going to revisit a topic today that we talked about about a month ago. Uh, and I also use reverse psychology. So uh, you should probably turn this video off right now. I'll give you a chance to do that. And you can just go about your day and miss exactly what we're going to talk about. Anyway, uh, good morning. I'm Pastor Jeff Elliott uh, from New Horizons Fellowship here in New Haven, Indiana. Uh, doing this low tech today. We're back to just a... Uh, uh, just my laptop and and microphone, so uh, we'll we'll pick up the pace again later this week. But doing the low tech today. Uh, good morning. Uh, glad you're out there, whether live or whether you're watching us later. Uh, we do this on Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, at 9 a.m. and then we uh, in a little different format our worship service on Sundays at 10:30. And you are more than welcome to um, join us in person for the worship services. Um, or like, share, um, comment on the videos, especially when we do the jokes, which are coming up in just a second. We encourage you to laugh heartily at those. Uh, anyway, today's first joke goes out to a uh, special tribute. Thank you, Cindy Hunter. Um, I was going to save that one, but it actually came up on my, the list that I had for today. Uh, so this goes out. Uh, this is a, a viewer submitted joke, which I would encourage if you have a great one or just an awful one, we'd be more than happy to do that. Um, so here's the one that was submitted uh, by our viewer, Cindy Hunter. Good morning, Peggy. It goes like this. Ladies, if he can't appreciate your fruit jokes, you need to let that man go. I'll give you a second to let it sink in. You need to let that man go. How about that? Did that help? All right, some other ones. I got some more while we're waiting for everybody to get tuned in here. Cosmetic surgery used to be such a taboo subject uh, but now you can talk about freely about botox and nobody raises an eyebrow and if you don't know what botox is that's you're not going to get that one at all so anyway um and this one i have found to be uh very true to life you really you have to hand it to short people because they usually can't reach it anyway i'm trying not to be uh not prejudiced against short people however there have been a number of times um, probably dozens when I've been in the grocery store and had to get something off the top shelf for someone who was shorter than me. So, oh, the, the, uh, the woes of being taller, uh, than many people. So anyway, all right, one last joke, uh, and it's related to our topic today. As I was uh, doing a little bit of studying, I ran across this story and it kind of qualifies as a joke, but I thought that'd be a good transition for us. Uh, I heard about the pastor who was voted the most humble pastor in America. And the congregation gave him a medal that said, to the most humble pastor in America. Then they, they took it away from him on Sunday because he wore it. Get it? Because he's not the most humble pastor because he wore his medal being the most humble pastor. Uh, I used to, to joke, that's similar to a joke I used to tell to some people about, um, I'm so humble, let me tell you how great I, I am because I'm so humble, something like that. Anyway, that's sort of our theme today. Uh, you may or may not remember that back on June 2nd, uh, I talked about one of the fruits of the Spirit, uh, gentleness. And I was very intentional about that because of the tone of social media and, and just social media in general. Um, and we defined gentleness on that day. And, and I said at that point that I might come back to the fruits of the Spirit. Uh, and we still may do that. Um, but we're taking a branch of the gentleness tree today. We define gentleness as the quality of being kind, tender, or mild-mannered. Uh, and we listed that as one of the fruits of the Spirit, one of the lesser talked about, lesser um, lesser popular fruits of the, fruits of the Spirit, because um, gentleness isn't really something that goes far in our culture today. And I want to diverge off of that. But there's at least one other translation where that word gentleness, when it gives the listings of the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians 5, where the word is meekness. Uh, and that kind of makes, you know, in American Western culture today, 
hardly ever use the word meekness. Um, but that word gentleness is translated meek, is translated meekness in the Bible. And I want to read some other places where the word meekness is translated that way. And so let's talk about that idea as it's related to gentleness, but also kind of down the down the uh, meekness path. So I looked up the definition of the word of the word meekness, and it said the fact or condition of being meek. That's very helpful, isn't it? When the dictionary says that, but then it also listed a few others: uh, submissiveness, humility, um, acquiescence. Um, so those those words are kind of all related: submission, gentleness, meekness, acquiescence. Um, and I really tried to think about it. Meekness would be the opposite of forcing your own way on somebody. Um, and I wanted to read a read a story as it was too long for me to type it out. Uh, but I have a book of illustrations that pastors so I don't use it very often. Uh, but I was trying to find a good way to illustrate meekness. Uh, and this is technically a story that's it's not a story. It's just a short little thing. Technically into the, the topic of submission. Uh, but I wanted to read this to you because I thought this was important for us to understand as we talk about meekness. It says the captain of the ship looked into the dark night and saw faint lights in the distance. Immediately, he told his signalman to send a message. Alter your course 10 degrees south. Promptly, a message was received. Alter your course 10 degrees north. The captain was angered. His command had been ignored. So he sent a second message. Alter your course 10 degrees south. I am the captain. Soon another message was received. Alter your course 10 degrees north. I am Seaman Third Class Jones. Immediately, the captain sent a third message, knowing the fear it would evoke. Alter your course 10 degrees south. I am a battleship. Then the reply came, alter your course 10 degrees north. I am a lighthouse. Well, sometimes, uh, every time I read that story, I think how powerful that is that a captain who's used to commanding and being in charge and having his orders followed, just gets more and more forceful about getting his way. Uh, and yet the seaman third class Jones says, it's very important that you be submissive to my orders at this time. Uh, so I wanted to, to develop that thought a little bit and talk about meekness in scripture. I would guess um, that Bible translators change that word meekness to gentleness because and I don't know this for a fact, but this is just me guessing based on the common usage of our words, that meekness kind of has this um, mousy connotation to it. It's not macho. It's not manly for us to talk about meekness. Um, but, but that's not really what the word means. Um, and despite that connotation that we give for today, the word still shows up in places in Scripture. Back in uh, Numbers chapter 12, it said, uh, what, some versions say that Moses was the most humble man on the face of the earth, which... Uh, I have always found to be ironic because Moses wrote the book of Numbers uh, and recorded it for us. And to say that about yourself is very not humble, right? Just like the joke that we started with this morning. But in other places, it says, um, I, I forget which version is translated, that Moses was the meekest man on all the earth. And the, the Hebrew word there means um, humble or poor. Um, most other versions translate it humble there, but it is also meek in some versions. Uh, and then in Psalm 37, uh, it's a verse that I think Jesus quoted, and we're going to spend more time on that this morning. Uh, the, it says, the meek will inherit the inherit the land and enjoy great peace. Um, and it kind of sounds like what Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount. You know, we um, maybe you're familiar with the verse in Zechariah 9, but I'm thinking it was a song or a poem or something, but Jesus meek and lowly riding on a donkey. Uh, you can put that in the comments. If you know where that came from, I'd be curious to hear that. But it just, the, the phrase sticks in my mind. Uh, and all I could think of was Zechariah 9, 9, where it talks about that, uh, about Jesus' entry into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. Um, when we, and what Jesus also talked about is meek and mild. And, you know, those are just phrases that stick in our mind. And we don't think about that word meekness. Um, but in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus talks about meekness. And he says, blessed are the meek, right? Because that's what the Sermon on the Mount is about. Uh, and in Matthew 5, 5, he says, The meek shall inherit the earth, probably quoting Psalm 37. Uh, so I wanted to read you some notes about this, this phrase in, in Matthew 5. Why Jesus would say, The meek shall inherit the earth. The meek are the gentle, um, those who do not assert themselves over others in order to further their own agendas in their own strength. Meekness is a, willing, a willingness to submit yourself to someone else. Um, and I would add that 
really, we don't have any of that going on today. Everybody gets a search themselves uh, instead of listening to someone else. Uh, the Greek word there means gentle, humble, considerate, courteous. Um, and therefore exercising the self-control without which these qualities would be impossible. Um, then the commentator says, although we rightly recoil from the image of our Lord as gentle Jesus, meek and mild, because it conjures up a picture of him as weak and, eff and effeminate. Yeah, he described himself as gentle and lowly in heart, and Paul referred to his meekness and gentleness. Um, so when we, when we hear that Jesus say this, that the meek shall inherit the earth, how does that happen? Because it seems so contradictory to what we see in our day and age, right? We should expect the opposite. Um, another, and actually a lengthy commentary on the, the Sermon on the Mount says, The godless may boast and throw their weight about, yet real possession eludes their grasp. He's talking about how the meek inherit the earth. The meek, on the other hand, although they may be deprived and disenfranchised by men, Yet because they know what it is to live and reign with Christ, can enjoy and even possess the earth, which belongs to Christ. Then on the day of the regeneration, there will be new heavens and a new earth for them to inherit. So I wanted to challenge you this morning to think about meekness, probably in a way differently, different than we you usually do. And, and just say to you that meek does not mean weak. Um, when we talk about meekness from Scripture and inheriting the earth, a person who's meek and the humble before Christ is trusting that God will advance our cause. Um, F.B. Meyer said the only hope of a decreasing self is an increasing Christ. Uh, and that should be our goal. And, and let, let's it's uh, early in the week. It's still Tuesday. There's time this week for you to practice meekness. Colossians 3.12 says, uh, put on then like we're literally like putting on clothing as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, put on kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, um, bearing with one another. And I just want to close with, um, it's a passage of scripture that uh, I think kind of helps us apply all of this. I'm going to read from the message because it's, a, it's more of a paraphrase than a translation, but it's much easier to apply. Uh, Second Corinthians chapter six. I posted this on my Facebook page yesterday, and uh, I know several people uh, at least read it or liked it or commented on it. So um, this would be how we would apply meekness in this crazy world today, where everybody seems to be asserting themselves. I think Paul gives us good instructions about that in Second Corinthians chapter six. And again, this is from the message, uh, verses four to ten. Paul says, "Our work is God's servants." gets validated or not in the details. People are watching us as we stay at our post, alertly, unswervingly, in hard times, tough times, bad times, when we're beaten up, jailed, and mobbed, working hard, working late, working without eating with pure heart, clear head, steady hand, in gentleness, holiness, and honest love, when we're telling the truth and when God's showing his power, when we're doing our best setting things right, when we're praised and when we're blamed, slandered and honored, true to our word, though distrusted, ignored by the world, but recognized by God, terrifically alive, though rumored to be dead, beaten within an inch of our lives, but refusing to die, immersed in tears, yet always filled with deep joy, living on handouts, yet enriching many, having nothing, having it all. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for those who are tuning in today. Um, and I just pray that as we talk about this idea of gentleness, meekness, humility, and all that that encompasses us, um, we can understand that it's not weakness to submit ourselves to you and to your rule. It's not weakness to um, be willing to listen to others. Lord, we pray for an outpouring of your spirit and, and a new sense of gentleness and meekness in our, in, our, in our hearts. Start with us, Lord, but also in our culture. May you be um, honored and glorified um, as your people uh, portray meekness and humility to those around us as we become countercultural in a way of, of submitting ourselves to the world around us, um, that it becomes so Christ-like, that it is so attractive to them that they are drawn to you. 
Um, and I pray for um, the person out there today that may specifically just struggle in this area. Um, they are so used to putting their ideas forward and maybe they're in a leadership position and um, are expected to lead and submission is not part of their role. Lord, create and cultivate in their heart um, and in their mind an understanding of and in their heart a passion for uh, gentleness and meekness. Lord, we thank you for your word again uh, that gives us guidance in these areas. Uh, teach us to be uh, gentle and meek. And as we, if we do return to these fruits of the Spirit in the coming weeks, we will embrace all of them fully um, and none more than the others, realizing that you, you have called us to this. And to be faithful, uh, we must consider what you've laid before us. And we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Well, hey, thanks for tuning in today. Again, if there is a way that we can pray for you or you have something to share, you can message us at the New Horizons inbox. You can leave a comment in the comment board. Uh, email me, Pastor Jeff at newhorizonsfellowship.net. Uh, and as always, uh, thanks for being there and have a great week. God bless.